be informed and stay up to date with what your elected representatives are doing on your behalf with the State House Report. My name is Cambrell Garvin and I represent South Carolina House District 77 located in Richland County. It's certainly an honor and privilege to continue to be a member of this General Assembly and to represent the interests of my constituents. There are a lot of good things that are happening here at the State House. Just last year, we passed a multi-billion dollar incentive package that brings and delivers Scout Motors uh, to Richland County and to House District 77. This deal will be a game changer for our community, uh, given that it will bring over 4,000 new jobs, good paying jobs, to so many folks here in Richland County. We want to make sure that our students are, are prepared to take on some of these jobs because you know quite honestly we recognize that everybody won't go to college uh, but we want to make sure that our students are finishing up high school prepared on day one to enter uh, this career field and, and again making good paying jobs that can sustain a family going into the future so i think that's one of the positive things that has happened here in this general assembly but there have been many many policies that i believe take us backwards as a state and I think that as a Democrat who finds himself in a super minority, I am concerned about the direction of our state as it relates to many of the social and divisive issues that we continue to have to fight day in and day out, year in and year out. Let me give you some examples. Just recently, the South Carolina House of Representatives passed a controversial Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Bill, DEI, a bill that, uh, that, uh, that restricts uh, certain programs that actually uh, that make our college campuses more diverse, programs that support folks from un underrepresented or historically marginalized groups in our state. You know, to me, that is certainly not taking us the direction that we want to go. Another bill that has recently passed the House is a bill that sends public school dollars or public school or public tax dollars to private schools. And we have never and I say never fully funded our public schools in this state at the levels that they need to be funded. And now we are willing to give public dollars to private schools and to, and to parents that want to send their kids to private schools. Now, I have nothing against private schools. I, I want to be very clear, uh, very clear about that. But I feel and I believe fun, fun, fundamentally that if a parent wants to send their child to a private school, that they should pay for that service. Now. I believe in school choice. And what do I mean by that? I believe that we should be able to send our kids to any public school of their choice. For example, here in Richmond 1 and Richmond 2, we have some premier, some very excellent public school choice options um, for Montessori, uh, to get to the talented, uh, and so forth that our students can take advantage of. I support those sorts of initiatives. Um, and so, uh, I just want to be very clear about that. I think taking public dollars and sending it to private schools is a bad thing. In addition to that, the South Carolina Pat House recently passed, uh, the Senate passed it, and now the governor has signed into law a controversial open carry bill. Now, what does that mean? Anybody above the age of 18 can now carry a weapon without any sort of training because as the bill sponsors are argued, it is their constitutional right. So I am a proud CWP holder, okay? So I, I, I am not anti-weapon, I'm not anti-gun. I think that gun ownership should be responsible. I think that we do wanna certainly keep guns out of the hands of people that will use them to do harm and who, who have a proven track record of doing just that. And so I think that given that we now are removing the training aspect, there are gonna be a lot of folks out there that now will face the consequences. And I think within the African-American uh, African -American community, I think that we will certainly see the consequences of this bill uh, uh, play out as more and more of our young folks uh, die at the hands of gun violence. A few months ago in one of my communities, we had a, 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 a terrible shooting here in Richland County. And the shooting involved several young people uh, that tragically were killed. Uh, just last year, there was a shooting at a local park where several young people were injured and, miraculous, and miraculous, miraculously, none of them were killed, but they were severely injured as a result of 
the gun violence. I think as a state legislator, we have to be responsible. We have to put policies in place that protect our communities. We have to put policies in place that build upon a, a brighter, a more prosperous South Carolina and continue to fight bad bills. But I will say this, progress will not come so long as this General Assembly that we have in place, and that's, that's just truly controlled by far-right Republican extremists, uh, until we change the landscape of this General Assembly, we will continue to get bad policies that take us backwards as a state instead of forward. So whether it be DEI, or whether it be constitutional carry of weapons, uh, or whether it be sending public dollars to private schools, we will continue to see these sort of dr draconian policies uh, until we make a difference and, and until we can get more uh, folks in this body elected that can stop them. As Democrats, I said it four years ago when I did this interview with this update, as Democrats, we are in a super minority. Every election cycle, we lose more members. And until we stop that bleeding, until we stop that tide, we will unfortunately find ourselves continuing to have this conversation about how bad things are uh, and how much more progress we need to make. And, I'll, and I will end with this statement. I remind my colleagues often in here in the General Assembly that we are no longer in 1964. This is 2024. And the policies that we implement, the ideas that we champion, should be reflective of the fact that we have made progress. However, unfortunately, we continue to regress as a state, we continue to regress as a nation, and we have to stop this tide. Uh, or unless, or if we don't, then the rights that our parents enjoy, the rights that our grandparents enjoy, my kids' generation will not be able to enjoy. And that's scary. Thank you.